In this video, we'll learn about density-based clustering analysis method called dbscan and try implementing it through coding. dbscan, short for density-based spatial clustering of applications with noise, is known to be one of the best performing methods in density-based analysis. The fundamental principle is to group together data points that are close to each other based on their density. In contrast to the k-means clustering method mentioned in the previous video, dbscan does not require predefining the number of clusters. Moreover, dbscan is known to be effective in discovering clusters of arbitrary shape, even clusters embedded within other clusters like a donut or crescent, as well as in handling noise and outliers. When we have data shaped like a crescent as shown below, the clusters are generated by k-means clustering since it is distance-based method, as opposed to dbscan, which is density-based. This makes dbscan much more effective in performing cluster analysis, as it can appropriately handle crescent-shaped data like this. When executing dbscan, there are two important parameters, epsilon, and minimum points. Epsilon represents the maximum distance that a point can be from another point to be considered a neighbor. And if the distance between two data points is less than or equal to epsilon, they are considered neighbors. Minimum points represent the minimum number of points required to form a cluster, and it should be chosen at least three. For example, if minimum points is set to five, considering the red point P as the center and a circle with a radius of epsilon. If there are five or more points within that circle, it is considered as one cluster. In the image below, you can see that within the epsilon radius, including the red point, there are five points forming a cluster. In DB scan, it classifies every data point into one of three categories, core point, border point, or noise by creating a circle of epsilon radius around every point. If a data point has at least the minimum points within the epsilon radius, it is classified as a core point. If a data point has fewer than the minimum points within the epsilon, it is classified as a border point. Finally, if a data point doesn't have any other data points within the epsilon, it's considered noise. As shown in this diagram, when the minimum points are set to 4, the brown point has a circle with an epsilon radius containing more than 5 data points, making it a core point. The orange point has only 2 data points within the circle, which is less than the minimum of 4, so it becomes a border point. Lastly, the gray point is considered noise because there are no other data points within its epsilon radius. Now let's take a look at how clustering is formed through dbscan. Assuming we have set the minimum points to four, we start by randomly selecting a data point. Let's call it P1. Using P1 as the reference, we create a circle with an epsilon radius and find six points within it. Since this is greater than the minimum points, P1 becomes a core point. We then create circles with an epsilon radius for all the points within this circle and search within those circles. In the case of P2, there are also six data points within its epsilon radius, making it a core point. Both P1 and P2 are core points, so by connecting them, they form one cluster. We then extend the cluster region in this manner. For P3, there are only three data points within its radius, making it a border point. As for P4, since there are no other data points within its radius, it is considered noise. By following this process, we complete the cluster formation. Now, let's proceed to implementing dbscan through coding. You can download this Jupyter Notebook file from GitHub and run it yourself. To perform the coding, We'll import NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib for graph plotting. Additionally, we'll import the dbscan library. Similar to hierarchical clustering and k-means clustering we discussed earlier, we'll use the make underscore blobs function provided by scikit-learn to create a virtual dataset. 
Here, n underscore samples indicates the number of data points, and centers represent the number of clusters. By setting n underscore samples to 500 and centers to 5, we generate a virtual data set with 500 data points distributed among 5 clusters. Consequently, we'll have a total of 500 data points, with 100 points for each cluster. If we print the X and Y data for the first 10 points, we can observe the coordinates and the labels indicating which of the clusters, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, each point belongs to. By using the unique command provided by the NumPy library, we can remove duplicate values and display those unique values. The Y data contains a total of five values, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 representing the five clusters. We utilized the for command to create a two-dimensional representation. We input the values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 into C to depict each cluster on the graph. Additionally, we added 1 to create a legend displaying the five clusters. Intuitively, you can see that the generated dataset is well divided into five clusters. Assuming these five clusters represent the original dataset, we can practice comparing our clustering analysis results with this and verify how well the clustering analysis is functioning. For DB scan cluster analysis, let's set epsilon to 1 and the minimum points to 5 using Euclidean distance for measurements. Unlike the k-means clustering method, we don't predefine the number of clusters and proceed with the cluster analysis using the X data. After running the cluster analysis, when we compare the actual clusters with those analyzed through DB scan, we find that the actual clusters consist of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, totaling 5 clusters. On the other hand, DB scan identifies clusters from minus 1 to 4, giving us a total of 6 clusters. To examine this in detail, let's visualize it using different colors. When running DB scan, we can observe clustering into five groups orange, brown, red, green, and purple. Notably, some points are marked in blue, indicating that they are considered noise and not part of any cluster. Essentially, DB scan is density based, so points that are far from high density areas are classified as noise. Conversely, if you refer to the previous video on k-means clustering, you'll notice these points were included in the red or orange cluster.